Coming to you live from somewhere in America, it's the Big Rig Travels Road Crew Radio Podcast. Be sure to visit BigRigTravels.com for the latest dynamic information live from the open road. Now, here is your tour guide to the American Highway and host of Road Crew Radio, Big Rig Steve. All right, hey, so <laughs> so I'm trying to adjust my uh, microphone here as I watch the counter go down. And uh, how y'all doing? Welcome to the uh, second version of the Road Crew Radio Show. Uh, lighting's not perfect. I'm sweating to death because trying to get all the microphone setting and all that stuff. Uh, so let's do an audio check. How does this sound? Does it sound all right? I'm watching the YouTube chat at the same time. So far, we're not dropping any frames. So that tells me that we're uh, got strong enough signal, which is pretty good. I see Pirate and Terry and James and M.A. Sooty from across the pond. How are you? How's everybody doing today? All right. So, we're not driving today, because we don't have our delivery until tonight, uh, 6 o'clock, 6.30 actually. So, we'll leave the parking lot here at 5 o'clock, get to the ship, uh, to the delivery at 5.30. Uh, they let you in an hour early. So, that ain't too bad. Alright, so, I don't know. What shall we do? This is y'all's time. Look at my controls. Man, I went through like a bunch of updates. I started working on this about an hour ago, a little bit before that. Uh, I guess at this rate, it should have been like three hours. So, anybody got any uh, questions for me? Audio should be higher. Okay, well, how about that? Is that a little bit better? Is that a little bit better for you, Nancy? All right. I'm still playing and trying to learn and all that. So, all right. So, if you ever want to write an email to us, to, uh, ver uh, we just got messages. Stand by. We have been interrupted by work. <laughs> Uh, no singing, Jason. Okay, so, stand by. Figures, as soon as I go on there, they're going to start trying to talk to me. Interrupted by work, how dare they. Alright, so the next load picks up at... Any time, I guess. Any time tomorrow. Okay. Another short trip. Okay. Another short trip. Um, I guess we'll let it sit there for a minute. Alright, so anyways, if you ever want to write the Road Crew show a message, uh, topic, suggestions, whatever else. In fact, let me find that graphic real quick. That should show up. All you have to do is write Road Crew Radio at BigRigTravels.com and we'll try to answer some of the questions. This one here, Mrs. V wrote, wondering how do I plan my stops on my current trips for fuel, 30 minute breaks, uh, where do I end up for resting at the end of the night, how do I pick what truck stop, and all that. Well, there really is no plan. Uh, my only requirement is to be there uh, at pickup at the right time. And hey, I still got that graphic up. Yay. There we go. Is that a little bit better now? <laughs> um, I don't know. I bet nobody ever heard me. Did they? 
I don't know. Well, we're just screwing this show all up anyway. <laughs> all right. Well, we can't start it again, so I guess that's the way it is. Anyways, Miss V was asking about how do I plan my stops, fuel stops, 30-minute brake stops, and all of that. Uh, the only thing that I could say is if we pick up on time and deliver on time, everything else is negotiable. That means I pick up on time, load on time. They want me to fuel where they want me to. They send me through the fuel program uh, telling me where fuel loves Pilot Petro, what city. That fuel program actually takes a price, the current fuel price, at every truck stop along my route. And it will come back with the cheapest fuel. It'll say, get 68 gallons at this place, and then fill up at the next place. So, and they know how many gallons I have. They know how far I can go. So, we try to stick to that. Other than that, we could stop anytime we want. We could drive as long as we want. Uh, as long as we show up on delivery on time. So... That's how we do that. All right, and that came from Mrs. V. Um, product damage. Kevin Ford from Staten Island, New York, wants to know, how do we handle... Where to go? With the, with the condition of some of the roads you travel and the truck stops overnight and the potholes, your loads must get bounced around quite a bit. How often does it happen that any products you're transporting gets damaged? Who's responsible for that? The driver, the company, insurance? Actually, that's a pretty good question. But, um, I very, very rarely have any cargo claims. So far, cross my fingers. There's never been a cargo claim against me as a driver. Um, if you keep your truck and trailer upright and drive responsibly and, and know when you're top heavy and all that stuff, you really shouldn't have any problems. The message has arrived. And, <laughs> and so the only damage that we have really had was like forklift damage where the shipper won't load it correctly and you might get a box or two tumble over um, and then we're not responsible for that they always sign that as shipper damage sometimes we've had a either a shipper or a unloader run a forklift and have the forklift blades too high and end up smashing the blades right into a box and destroying whatever's in there and yes that counts as damage but it's not my fault so they have to fill up fill out the lines you know cargo claims all that stuff john what i keep seeing you call my name you can't see that i'm busy <laughs> uh all right john you're interrupting the show what do you need man Let John interrupt the show and ask a question real quick while I take care of Boss, who wants to know why I read the trip and didn't respond to it. So I guess John ain't going to answer, huh? I guess this question isn't that important. <laughs> All right, stand by. Let me... Oops, I don't want that. All day and all night, they didn't want to talk to me, and now they want to talk to me. I guess James didn't want to ask a question after all. It's 
Stand by, got to approve this load. So, obviously, we now have an X load. Okay, I guess John, John don't have a question. All right, so anyways, I've been following your travels for over a year now. Love seeing the country from your front window. Good, glad you like it. And that was Kevin Ford from Staten Island, New York. I wanted to have little graphics. I could not figure out how to do that. Um. So, we've got Martin from Bolivar, Missouri. He wants to know about the pre-pass, how I know when I can go in, and how I know what kind of, you know, if we have a pre, uh, how can I say this? If we can bypass the scale, if we have to go into the scale, or whatever the case may be, we have a transponder, a pre-pass transponder say that three times fast in the truck and it automatically talks to the way station uh, most of the time in the highway you will see a flat spot scale where we run over that and they check our basically check our weight if everything's good we're not over 34,000 per axle nine out of ten times we will get a green light and you'll hear a little beep 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 we can automatically pass them. Other times, you can be empty or perfectly legal or whatever, and they, the way station wants to pull everybody in. So they will flat out turn it off. And it's off, and you don't get a transponder message. Then, guess what? You have to go in. Uh, and then a lot of times, on that little ramp to the way station, they have another scale, but you're going a lot slower, and they'll check your weight there. Uh, then they'll tell you either to use a bypass lane or not. Some places like Kentucky don't use pre-pass. They use NORPASS, which is like a competitor to pre-pass. We do not have that. So if they're open, we have to go in. Uh, other way stations have electronic signs, and they will tell you, all truckers must follow the electronic signs and it will say truck okay to bypass or truck must exit so you really have to pay attention to what each individual way station wants and if you're in doubt roll in there so put my coffee somewhere where i can reach it all right so i'm looking at chat here um isaac isaac uh from oh i could see it in my mind i can't remember the town romeoville aurora illinois howdy he's just checking in walt smith there howdy to you glenn phillips is saying it's a good idea to pre-plan loads for a whole week at a time well in a perfect world, I would love that. A lot of the times, the planners get a message from the customer, and basically we do it the next day or so. Sometimes we get two days' notice. Remember, it's not like everybody's got a big old clearing house of loads. A lot of times, a customer will get a order from one of their customers and then say, okay, we need this product in, in two days or three days. When you order something from Amazon, Amazon doesn't hold your order for a week, do they? No, they send it right out as soon as you, as soon as you basically pay for it. No, it's, it's the same thing for us, man. I'm sweating that. But if I roll down the window, you guys are probably gonna get a lot of extra noise. I guess I should get a fan. Bolingbroke Aurora. There you go, Isaac. I knew that. Chris from Zimbabwe. How are you? 
Man, I need like three computer screens. <laughs> Just be able to see everything at once. All right, so we got another question from the chat room. I'm kind of reading the chat room. And yes, I understand we are not doing a perfect show with perfect graphics and all this other stuff. But if you watch this whole channel, Big Rig Travels, on YouTube, you know that we don't do the same thing that everybody else does. I like being different. I wrote scripts and all this other stuff for the shows. And you know what? I just like winging it. This way I get to talk to you guys. What happens, happens. Um, I can show you outside if we see anything interesting. We got a whole red truck and a whole white truck to look at. So, there you go. I'll let you look back at me. <laughs> By the way, just so you know. Check us out on Facebook. You can join us on Facebook and Twitter. And, uh... A lot of times I put pictures up on Twitter just because it's easier to do from the phone. You don't have to have Twitter, but if you go to the biggertravels.com on the blog and uh, scroll down to the blog where I write the blog text at, off to the right hand side, you'll see uh, a Twitter feed pasted in there and you can just click on the pictures if you want. Is the trip journal getting a lot of clicks? Arnegad's asking, I don't know. I hadn't investigated that. I know I got enough emails from people telling me to like it. I think it's kind of cool because a lot of times people ask, what'd you carry on your next load? How many degrees was it? And all that stuff. And I thought, well, might as well make a journal for it. And that way the information is there for everybody to look at if they want to. I mean, You'd be surprised at some of the stuff I carry. Uh, with this last trip that we did, we hit over a million pounds that we've hauled so far. So, pretty good. Walt is saying, I have my own little niche of what you do, and other channels are doing it for money. Well, I, yeah, no, everybody's doing their own thing. Um, in, in life in general, I've always done my own thing. I don't copy other people. I want to do my own stuff. That way there's no comparison about who's better and who's not better. I don't believe in any of that stuff. If you do something, you do it for you. And you do it because you enjoy it. And then if other people want to watch what you're doing, then great. And I think that's what adds to uh, our personal success. I think the road crew is the best ever. I should put the camera on that red truck. Old Pete Bill. Uh, I, th I think what we have going makes me happy. I think it makes quite a few other people happy. In fact, last night, or yesterday, we had several road crew show up. Uh, in, in including a kid, and this is why I always tell you that I it's important to be family friendly kids safe because last night was proof that we do have kids watch and five year old kid watches all the time and I think they're from a town just outside of London and I think that is fantastic and the boss is trying to talk to me again gosh I'll get um did I get in a traffic game yesterday going through the gorge eh, I don't know I think traffic was a little slow in some places but I don't remember um, are there medical requirements for truck drivers such as periodic physicals all that stuff you do have to have a medical certificate every two years and I think mine is due this year come to think of it um, in fact let me check it's either this year or next year but yes you do have to see a DOT certified doctor and they will 
if you're in good health, they would issue you a card good for two years. I think there's some medical conditions that will do it for one year. No, we've got another year. So I did it last year. So we're good to next year. Woohoo! Washington Courthouse, Ohio checking in. Good to see you. I see you in Chimama. Checking in. Do I see the coolest big rigs when I go out west? Uh, I guess. Um, I don't know, you kind of see them everywhere, but I do know that Barso, California, for some reason, has quite a few customized ones. So, I think that's pretty cool. Mary, how are you? Oh, M.A. Sudi's over there talking to Aunt Jemima. <laughs> have, I, have I driven on U.S. 66? I have at some point. Uh, different places. Uh, Rick H. is telling me, or asking me, reminding me, I'll get it right here in a minute, to tell you about the crybaby in Snowville, Utah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Let's talk about the crybaby in Snowville, Utah. Alright, so if you're going to be a truck driver, and, you know, I mean... Really, you can't be sensitive. You have to be, have a somewhat of a thick skin. You have to realize you are around trucks. In case you didn't know it. <laughs> so anyways, there's dry vans, there's flatbeds, there's reefers. In fact, that's the reefer running right now. This one is actually pretty quiet. Wow, that cool air feels nice. This reefer is actually running pretty quiet. There are some that make like a lot of noise. Uh, there's some that turn on and off. And there's some that run continuously. But anyways, back to the story. There was a Snowville, Utah. We were done for the night. And we saw a good parking spot middle of the day for whatever reason I think at that time I was running night schedule we pulled into a parking spot and it happened to be next to a dry van a dry van meaning if you know a, a box with no reefer to it so I'm sitting there about 15 minutes later this kid 22 25 whatever he was comes walking up to me and I'm watching him walk to me from the truck stop and he was just staring me down non-stop and as he gets closer to me he gets between his truck and my truck and he looks at my truck and then he looks at his truck and he looks at my truck and he looks at his truck and so I rolled the door down a uh, window down and I said hey dude uh, <laughs> I didn't hit you. What's your problem? I mean, we were getting a nasty look. So he, he kind of cussed me out a little bit, and, and he says, "Don't you know you parked next to you next to a dry van?" And I look, and it's like, uh, "Yes." So, well, I can't sleep at night with a reefer on it. And he. <laughs> He, he cried for like 10 minutes or so it seemed like about how inconsiderate I am for parking next to a dry van with my noisy reefer and I should be more considerate and selective in where I park and I mean I the guy wasn't mad the guy was literally having a meltdown and I thought all right this guy is new to trucking and he's going to learn and he's going to learn fast. 
So, guess what? I decided to be nice. I told them I will move. Even though I didn't have to. I told them I would move. And I did. I moved over like kitty corner, I don't know, 20 trucks away from them or something like that. So I moved. And I had to see beyond. And about 10 minutes later after that, the guy was on CB talking about this reefer driver that parked next to him and how inconsiderate that was and he can't believe that happened and all that stuff. So guess what? We got on <laughs> we we got on our CB and I said, dude, I moved for you. And you're still whining about it after I moved. And you're making me sound like the bad guy. I said, I'm over here 20 trucks away from you. You should have heard the CB light up. We had trucks saying, where is he? What's his truck? What does his truck look like? Where's he park? I have a reefer I want to park next to him. So, since the guy was a complete goober snort, I told the people where he was parked and the color of his truck and what it, the name on his truck said. And I'm not kidding you. Within two minutes, there was a reefer parked on each side of him. <laughs> And it's like, you know, you would have been okay if you kept your mouth shut, but you kept on and kept on and kept on. And now look what you've done. I mean, I just, you know, really, uh, you're a truck driver. There's noise all the time. And if you really, really cannot sleep, because of truck stop noise, you're not going to make it. And I'm willing to bet you that he is not a truck driver today. Maybe he is. Maybe he's got super duty headphones on. I don't know. But that just ranks as one of my uh, one of my top whoa type of things in truck driving. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I will say, I will admit that I grin from ear to ear. Because the guy got what he wanted, or the guy got what he deserved. I mean, I moved, and he still whined about it. I was like, dude, really? Okay, so thanks for reminding me. I like sharing my stories with you. Uh, I hope you glad you like that. Uh... All right, so DMF trucking. I see a Texas woman, Judy Walt, Modi, Isaac Stellar. All right, so what else you guys want to talk about before we open up the phone lines? Which reminds me, I better. So, anyways, um, Here's the email address again for you. If you have your questions, then uh, make sure you email me. I will try to answer them on the next show that we do. So here's that little card. Road Crew Radio at BigRigTravels.com All right, so let me pull up my other screen. And pull in my little studio. Mary Smith, how are you? Start new show. got that. Now let me call in.
manage your callers from the call in studio web interface. Okay. So I am signed in. So let me I forgot what <laughs> I forgot what screen it was. There you go. There's a proper screen for you. If anybody wants to call in, you can. If not, we'll sit here and I'll just keep gabbing. Roll this up. Do I like long trips or short? Obviously, I like long trips because I get to uh, uh, drive and not worry about stuff. Hit the wrong button. Oh, well, there's somebody calling in right now. Uh, I like long trips because I get to wake up and basically drive. Don't have to worry about hunting down a shipper and hunting down a, um, you know, anything like that. Uh, looking for directions, things like that. Just, just drive, and that's all I got to worry about. We lost. Y'all lost me. I sure we're still broadcasting. I don't know. I I show I show green light all the way around here. So. Well, I tell you what. Let's talk to James. James, you hear me? Yeah. Hey, look, there you are. Welcome to the Road Crew Radio Show. How are you? Pretty good. So whatever ended up happening with your broadcast there at the uh, at the truck stop when you broke down? Mm, what truck stop? What broke down? <laughs> Give me an idea. <laughs> it's a new day. I forgot. Last week, uh, when you were waiting for the tow truck, Okay, the video should be up there up until we hit the fuel island. Is that what you're talking about? No, you were parking the fuel island and broke down. Right. And we ran until the battery went out, and that was it. We. Is that what you're asking? <laughs> oh, okay, you your phone battery ran dead on you. Well, yeah, because there was no way to charge the battery with the truck not starting. So, plus we had three shorted out batteries. So, the, <laughs> we, we let the, the show go for, I don't know, what was it, another hour? Maybe an hour and a half or something like that. So, but, now I can tell you're listening to me through the show. And that's why there's like a five or six second delay. So, an echo. Yeah. So, anything else? Um, I was also curious of, I didn't have any actually trouble getting onto the website. Okay. How about? It keeps saying that it can't be found. You talking about BigRigTroubles dot com or YouTube or what? Um, the well, actually, the part I'm having trouble getting into is the new page that you order that you put on just uh, the trip where you put all the data. Um, you talking about like the trip journal? Yeah. I don't know. I have not heard anything. I go to it and update it, you know, every other trip or whatever it is. I've not seen any problem. I've not had anybody else mention that. Uh, are you going through a uh, bookmark of your own? Or are you using a link on the website or what? Um. Yeah, I have it bookmarked in my... In my in my browser, I have a bookmark. Okay. 
Well, you might want to. Yeah, you might want to maybe delete that bookmark and try again. I don't know. I've not. I've not had any issues with it that I've seen. And usually, people are pretty good at reporting, you know, website problems or whatever. So, I would, I would get rid of that bookmark and then, you know, take it from there. Uh, retype it in or, or follow the link in the menu and and see how that does for you. Right. I, I mean, I've, I went in past the bookmark and used the, the link that's where the map used to show up. Well, right. I've also had trouble getting in the map page. <laughs> Yeeks. Since you moved it. Wow. I've, I've not had anybody say anything, actually. Um, do, I guess maybe try, you know, a different browser. Try deleting the bookmarks or whatever. And I don't know if you continue having problems. I don't know. Give me a screenshot that shows your URL and and the message you're getting. And I guess we'll try to look into it. But I, like I said, I've not heard of any problems with anybody else. All right, I'm gonna let you go. It was. Good to talk to you, James. I've got a line of other folks, but yeah, seriously, I've not heard anybody reporting problems. If you continue to have problems, send me an email. You know, we'll we'll see what we can come up with. Okay, right, I'll do that. All right, thanks, man. I appreciate you calling in. Uh huh. All right, who do we got? Hey, let's go. Okay, well, apparently people didn't want to wait. <laughs> okay, let's talk to... Let's talk to Don. Keep hitting the wrong button on his cell phone. He's, hey, Steve. <laughs> how are you, Don? I, I was reading yours. And I it said call terminated, and I thought, no, well... <laughs> well, I can't figure out my cell phone. There are too many buttons in there. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> I'm stuck in the days of pay phones. <laughs> oh, you know, I remember you know those. I, mean. I remember when they went from 10 cents up to 25 cents. That's... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can barely hear you, too. Let me, um, let me turn into a corner here so I can hear you better. You know, I'm just wondering, you mentioned something about a photo contest for the month of March. Eeks. On one of your blogs? Yes. I had all these wonderful plans. I'm just plans. wondering if that's still on. <laughs> I had all these wonderful plans, and... Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, um, I did too. I, I, Life is what happens when you're busy making plans. That's what well, the limits are. what happened was I was all set to do it, and I started implementing the uploads, where you know you guys can upload your submissions, and they would go to the photo contest folder, and then uh -huh. other people could vote on it and whatever else. And I tried three different ones, and it kept coming up where when I would upload a test, you know, picture or whatever, it kept coming back as a security risk. And wow. as of last night, when I first, or last worked on it, that's still on hold. I hate to say it. I know that's wrong of me. I did have the plans. I will still do the photo contest, but... Okay. At the same time, I don't want to open up you or myself with that security issue. Last year, we spent oh, almost right, $2,000. Right, $2, no. <laughs> yeah, we, we spent almost $2,000. Huh? Yes. So it, it's still going to happen. Okay. I just got to find the right combination or the right settings or whatever it is. Uh, okay. So don't give up. Uh, just, I guess, as a general practice, well, that answers that. you can always uh, right click. I, I sure appreciate so. your, your YouTube uh, channel, and I really enjoy driving with you, too. You're a great driver, by the way. I'm sure you've heard this before, and you know it yourself, I'll bet. <laughs> I just try, <clears throat> and my main goal <laughs> is to try not to run over any of the goober storms that come in front of me. That's Well, that's what I like about it, because you, you always, uh, you, you, like you were saying the other day, that when you go through a small town, you go five miles less. That way, there's no chance of getting a feeding ticket. Yeah. Just things like that, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, because, you know, the small towns, they, uh, yeah. a lot of their budget That's comes their from truck drivers speeding. And, and because of maybe 
uh, downtowns are only a block or two. They could hide down the block, right, right. and you won't even see them as you fly by. And, yes, a lot of truck drivers do fly by. So if the sign says yeah. 45, I'm going 40, so there's no question. There's no, the cop yeah, looked up good. and just assumed I was speeding. I'd rather not <laughs> take yeah. that chance. You know they would, huh? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yes. Uh, Where are you calling from, by the way? Okay, well, listen, I won't keep you anymore, and I really enjoy it. Like I said, your your radio show and your driving and your YouTube channel and all, and keep up the good work and be safe out there. All right, I appreciate that, sir. Thank you very much. All right, thanks a lot, Dave. Yeah, bye. Okay, bye. Okay. All right. So, how's the audio sound for you guys? I'm looking for an answer in the chat room. Do you guys hear the call in both sides? All right. Let's see if I can get some AC going. AC, not heater. All right. Audio's good. Hey, look, I see a tomato head. All right, let's, uh, let's talk to David. He wants to ask about the clock. Yeah, hey, Steve, how are you? I'm good. a new viewer and certainly enjoy riding along with you in the road creek. Good. But at the end of the day, when you go through the clocks, right? You mentioned uh, I think it's three of them, and I'm I'm a little curious how those different clocks work and what they mean to you. Uh, basically, you know, just giving you the very very basic understanding of it. Uh, you can go online and search FM CSA and. Uh, They'll give you all the legal rundowns and all that stuff. But basically, we run off an eight-hour or eight-day, eight-day clock, if you want to call it that. In that eight-day period, we can drive or work 70 hours maximum. Okay. So if we work 10 day, uh, 10 hours, and we work 10 hours, and then we work 10 hours, six days a week. That's 60 hours. Do it 10 hours the seventh day. You're, that's a, your whole 70 hours in seven days. That eighth day, you have to sit still. And we actually end up doing that quite a bit. Uh, so that's the big cap there is 70 hours in eight days. As that ninth day comes up, you get back what you worked on the first day. Does it make sense? It kind of like just rolls around. Yeah, uh, it's sort of rolling way. Right. Um, pull up my clocks here. Home. So you have eight hours and zero minutes of remaining drive time. That that's a weekly clock. We also have the fourteen hour clock. When we first put ourselves on duty for doing our pre trip inspection, that's where you run around, check oil, check your lights. You know, before you do anything else, you have to do a half-hour inspection. When you start that clock, your day started, your 14-hour clock started. You can drive, you can sit, you can unload, you can do whatever you want to. But at that, once you hit that 14 hours, you cannot drive again. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you drive some, go loaded some, take a lunch, whatever else the case may be, at the 14th hour, you cannot drive. Now, part of that is there's an eight-hour clock. At that time when we first start in the morning, we can work and we can drive all we want to, but... Within that eight hour break, we have to take a half hour break. So that they just add to it. <laughs> but basically that's what it is. Now, yeah. on this 14 hour day, if we don't have any shippers to go do, don't have any unloading to do or anything like that, and all we do is just drive, we can only drive 11 hours maximum. 
and for us that's about 650 miles give or take after that even if you haven't reached your 14 hour clock you cannot physically drive past 11 hours so I don't know if that helps you or if I confused you more <laughs> it gets a little bit confusing it's easier to show on paper um, but yeah, there are quite a few clocks. It's designed to keep people from driving 24 hours non-stop, causing accidents, all that stuff. Um, yeah. I know I like the hours. Me personally, 70 hours is almost equivalent to two full-time jobs in a week. And quite a few times we hit 70 hours. I think that's plenty. Driving 14 hours a day or 11 hours a day, I think that's more than plenty. If you can't make a living doing that, I don't know if something's wrong. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a hard life. It is, it is. I mean, and it's, it's a 24-hour day job. You, I don't get to go home. I mean, my home's five feet behind me or, or two feet behind me. But, yeah, the hours, they're there to, you know, limit and prevent truck drivers from driving day and night and even nowadays we have people that just ignore that and run illegal as all get out and and that's what the hours are designed to to prevent if that makes sense i wish i could pull up a website off the top of my head but if you if you just do a google search for uh truck drivers, driving hours, I'm sure there's quite a few that can come up with graphics and probably explain it a little bit better than I just did. <laughs> okay, well I thank you and appreciate it very much Steve and continued safe travels and enjoyed riding along and seeing places that I've been before and, and places I haven't been either so best of all to you. Well thank I, you. I appreciate that, glad you like the website, thanks buddy. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. All right. Let's let's talk to Seattle. How are you, Seattle? Hey, I'm in the air. There you are. Hey, Nebraska, Scott's flow. Hey. So I see Seattle and I see Nebraska. Which one are you? <laughs> I'm Seattle, and Anita from Nebraska wants to say hi too, but she's not. Well, howdy. I see your messages and on Facebook. I just Facebook. want to ask you, I mean, I just want to say that, um... Now, well, listen, listen, listen. listen to me talk on the phone, because remember, there's a delay between when you hear me on the phone and when you hear me on the actual live stream. So make sure you turn that down and, and talk to me on the phone. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, I'd like to have that rear view mirror on the front left side of the truck. I'd like to see um, what's coming from behind. Yeah, that's a good mirror. <laughs> Um, I wish I could show you both, but the camera angle doesn't go that far, but, yep, I, I like having that, and, and you can see a car right as they hit the front of the trailer, so that, that's good for you all to watch, too. Right. Okay, well, you have a nice day. All right, I appreciate you. Thanks for calling. Keep on trucking. All right, thank you. That voice in the background. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let's talk to JD. JD, how are you? All right, how you doing, Steve? I'm doing good. Sweating to death in this hot truck, but I'm doing okay. <laughs> yeah, well, enjoy riding with you. 
lost my eyesight about 20 years ago after uh, having raced for 30 years and driven all over the United States. So I really enjoy uh, vicariously uh, running with you. So, uh, well, what was what was wrong with the truck last week? I mean, you, you said the radio ran out, but what was actually wrong with the truck? Why it wouldn't start? Uh, we had. We had three batteries short out on us, and, or the, that's what they say. <laughs> I know that, I don't know if it's just this truck or if it's across, you know, this model of truck or whatever, but the batteries don't last long here. And what they told me is we had three batteries short out at the same time. I don't know if... All three went bad at the blink of an eye, or if one went bad and then that caused another to go bad or whatever, but we end up with three shorted batteries and then that burned up the starter. And so they replaced all of those. Now, when we had the tires replaced in Kansas City, um, not last October, but the October before last, uh, they actually replaced all four batteries then as well. So, that, that's not too bad, though. I mean, that was the very first time this truck's ever been on a tow truck. So I can't right. complain. <laughs> yeah, but I remember you kept on saying it got plenty of battery, got plenty of battery, and uh, you, you just wouldn't, you know, the starter wasn't working or whatever, and the truck wouldn't start. But, but it was the batteries, and, and they burned out the starter. Yep, that's what I'm, that's what I've been told. Huh. And I guess, you know, I mean, with all the bumps and the potholes and the, the freezing temperature and hot, you know, and, and starting and driving, what is this, truck's got 386,000 miles on it, uh, you're going to have stuff go wrong. And oh, sure. all it takes is a bare wire to rub on something, you know, or whatever. So I, I, yeah. you're going to have stuff happen. And... Like I said, tow truck first time anything major happened to it, and we, and we were, you know, released from the shop the next morning. You, right. you can't beat that. I'm very happy with this truck. Yeah. Now, what about when you at fuel aisle in Etiquette? Um, I noticed uh, a lot of times you'll pull up in a fuel aisle and not to get fuel, but just to run in and get a cup of coffee. Okay. Is that um, standard procedure? Or? <laughs> well, isn't there isn't anything that's standard procedure? Uh, okay, so basically, you have a whole bunch of trucks going into a limited number of fuel pumps, fuel outlets. What you're supposed to do is, if you need fuel, you pull into the fuel thing, pump your fuel, hang up the nozzles, and drive forward. And while you are going inside to get coffee, whatever, the guy behind you can pump fuel and all that stuff. And if the timing's right, by the time he gets done, you should be back out. So that's what's supposed to happen. Um... If I just want coffee, you know, or do a coffee exchange, <laughs> I will pull into the fuel island, and if I can, I will wait behind a guy behind, or in the guy in front, I'll wait behind him until he clears out, and I'll pull up that spot and go get my coffee, and while I'm doing that, the guy behind me can fuel. Sometimes... If the guy in front of me, you know, went to go, uh, say he got fuel, he pulled forward and he left, since I know that all I do is go in there and get coffee, I, most times I can come back before he comes back. That's the way it's supposed to work. Uh, to me, it's quicker to run in and pull through the fuel island just for what, the four minutes, five minutes it takes me to get coffee, sometimes not even that. And it would for me to circle the lot, 
back into a spot, walk all the way across the truck stop, then walk back and, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's half being lazy and, and half, I know it won't take long. It, w it would really take yeah. me longer to back up and, and all of that. So, I don't know. That's my reason I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, you stay safe and enjoy riding with you. I got a question, if you don't mind me asking, and you don't have to answer this. I'm, you know, that's yeah. that's up to you. If you are blind, how do you watch my how do you watch my channel? Well, I'm uh, I'm legally blind. I have no sight in my left eye now, and I'm like 2,400 in my right eye. Okay. Okay. Um, so I can, you know, I'm sitting about a foot from the TV right now. Okay. And I've got a 42-inch TV that I use as my computer monitor. Okay. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I can see enough to, to stumble around, but uh, like if I passed you on the sidewalk, I wouldn't know it was you. You know, I know it was a person. Right. Um, and I know it was a guy, but, you know, I wouldn't be able to make out the detail it was you unless you stopped hey, you know. Right, I'm right. Steve. Um, okay. And then if I got up close enough to you, then I'd be able to uh, see. But, um, so, uh, you know, I've got, I've got some vision, but just very poor vision. Right. No, and, and I hope you weren't offended by me asking that, because we actually... No, not at all. We actually all. have a lot of our viewers you know they'll send me emails all the time and they will tell me that they're in a wheelchair or you know they, they used to be a truck driver and they got in, into an accident and can't drive anymore and i like how do i say this i like that the website can cater to their their needs like that can can get them out of the house um yeah. I, I, I think it's great. The website is actually yeah, used a lot more than I ever dreamed it could be. Yeah, well, that's, that's the thing. I mean, I can't drive anymore. And like yesterday or the day before when you were down at Talladega, Alabama, I was waiting to see if you mentioned something about passing the Talladega Speedway um, when you were coming out of Birmingham and going over to Atlanta and up to Gaffney. Um so, I mean, I, you know, hey, I remember when I was driving that road, and, um, of course, up, up and down 85 and, uh, and all that. So, it, it's fun to, to, it, to, like you say, get out, um, even though I'm not getting out. You're getting out for me. Right. Well, glad I could do that for you. Well, I appreciate it. All right. You have yourself a good afternoon, all right? You too. Take All right. Care. Be Th safe. Thank you. I will. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right. Let's see who else we got here. Uh, All right. Let's let's talk to Tim. If I can find the button. All right, Tim. How are you? From Nebraska City, Nebraska. Hi, yeah. Good to give me a shout out when you go through town. I remember uh, you. Yep, and it'll be a while before I get to get buy a coffee at the pilot station, that's for sure. You know... It's still got a lot, lot of water around it. I was wondering how, because I, I remember you've met me, what, once or twice there, and you basically lived on the street. I was wondering, and I yeah. talked to a buddy about... I wonder if it affected you, if your your place got flooded. Uh, did that bother you? Yeah. Well, let's put it this way. Since I don't live there anymore, I really don't know. I can't get to the house yet. It still has about probably about a foot of water around it. It's, it's gone down maybe three feet or so, so I really don't know what shape the house is in. Wow. But my question to you is, when you're driving through the country and you go by a lot of places that you would like to visit, do you have a notebook that 
you write these places down so you can visit them after you retire? <laughs> That's a good question, and the answer is no, because I would have an encyclopedia of 25 volumes. <laughs> um, you know, I'm pretty good at remembering places that I want to see again and whatnot, but I don't keep track of it because I never know when I'm going to be able to do it or anything like that. And so I figure, well, as I drive around, I'll get a general idea, say, like, uh, Snoqualmie Pass. I would love to go camping up there. Um, and, and basically, I just play stuff by ear. But, man, yeah, there's so many places that I pass that I would love to visit. So, of course, if we ever get rich enough, I'd uh, buy an RV and slap cameras around it and do exactly what I'm doing right now. And you can buy that new that dually that you want. Well, if we had a dually uh, pulling that camper around, that would be pretty nice as well. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let somebody talk to you again. Maybe I can catch you over at Percival's truck stop in maybe four to six months. And see you then. All right, I appreciate that, sir. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. Oops, I almost dropped myself. Uh, let's see, Jennifer. Let's talk to Jennifer. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. I was just wondering when you were coming back to Mooresville, North Carolina. Oh, give me an idea where that's at. <laughs> I don't know it's off the top Carolina. of my head. We were in Concord not too long ago. Okay. Like 30 minutes. Okay. I never I know. To give a big shout out to your favorite fan, and his name is Bradley. Bradley? Uh huh. Bradley follows you all the time. Well, Bradley, how are you from Big Rig Steve? He said, Bradley, how are you from Big Rig Steve? Bradley said he's doing okay. Good. Good. Well, it's not. What kind of coffee do you like? Oh, uh, Pilot's probably my favorite, but, uh,. Well, what kind of coffee was it? Oh, are you talking to somebody else or are you talking to me? No, I'm talking to you. <laughs> I was telling Molly she couldn't interrupt me because I was talking to you. I hear you. I think you'll be back this way. Uh, the trips, I don't know. Uh, okay. A lot of people ask me, you know, when am I going to be back at such and such place? I usually don't get a trip until that day, you know, or, or something like okay. that. Uh, the best thing you could do is watch the trip map or whatever, and really there's no advance warning, to be honest with you. I could be anywhere at a okay. moment's notice. Well, next time you come back here, you can stop and see if it's Trinity Healthcare. I will. All right, Big Rig Steve, thank you. You have a good trip. All right, say goodbye to Brandon for me. I'll tell Bradley you said Bradley, goodbye. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Safe travels. Thank you. Oh, let's see. Gossamer, I see Gossamer over there in the chat room. Well, let's talk to Minnesota. How are you, Minnesota? Hey, is this Eve? Yes, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing very good. How are you? Hi, this is Mike. I Howdy. talked to you when you were in Barstow, what, about two or three weeks ago? Okay, for, okay. I was so nervous and uh, didn't really know what to say, and the delay kind of made things awkward. I talked and talked and talked. So first thing I want to do is apologize for just getting on there and blah, 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 and not saying a lot, but I'll be back. Not a problem. No big deal. Oh, uh, how have you been? Oh, busy running around. Freight's a little bit slow, but I, not doing bad. Yeah, you've had a kind of a, a broke up schedule there with your starter or whatever problem that was. But I wanted to say I really enjoyed the trip you took up 
to Seattle. Man, there's so many beautiful places in this country that I really enjoy riding with you and looking at them. Well, thank you. There is a lot to this country um, that a lot of people just can't ever get out and see. And hopefully, now that the sun's out and it's starting to warm up, we can get some more drone flights in and Segway videos in and, and all that stuff. Yeah. Trying to cover and bring as much as I can to everybody. So, But, yeah, there, there's so My much to see and do. My wife is in there right now looking at the TV screen trying to hear. Say hello to Sherry, Steve. Sherry! How are you, Sherry? Hello. I'm waving to you. She's waiting for it to come up. So anyhow, I didn't want to take up too much time. I uh, look forward to maybe trying to get together with you when you come to Minnesota. And uh, maybe buy you a cup of coffee or a breakfast or a lunch or something so with that i'll let you go and you stay safe and really enjoy watching me i watch you a lot well i appreciate so, that all right we will uh for me all right if you uh okay. see me headed your way just send me an email you know a day ahead or whatever if you can we will send you an email that's for sure all right i appreciate okay. it all right, Chief. You have a safe trip wherever you're headed to it. So. All right. Thank you very much, Mike. All right. Take care. Bye. Okay. I see Jason in there. How are you, Jason? Chat room. All right. Let's look at the chat room. What kind of questions we got? Nickel, nickel tore the inside of the semi. If you go to the uh, website, Video Vault, and scroll down to V-Logs, there's actually a pre-recorded video of the inside of the truck. So. All right, so we have our next trip. And I'll update to the next trip while we're being unloaded. I see P-Tubs. I see Kathy in there. Pirate. Katrina. How are you? Dorothy V. Gossamer. How's Rusty doing? Have my mail in donation posted on chat to demonstrate to road crew how to donate. I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, I guess probably send me an email because I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, I guess a lot of people don't want to take wait to talk. DMF Rucking, how are you? Would I rather drive in blank, the sweltering heat or the snow? <laughs> well, how about a happy medium? Heat is, I don't know, you got to run the truck for air conditioner. And then, of course, extreme cold. If I absolutely had to choose between the two, I would probably say I do better in heat than I do cold. <laughs> Norman, let's let's go to Florida. 
some kind of button didn't work. Hey, hey Florida. Steve, you there? Yes, how are you? I'm doing well, man. I'll tell you what. I, I got to tell you that um, I, I watch you from Ormond Beach, Florida, and okay. we're at a funeral home here. Okay. Are you there? Yep. Now, when you talk, make sure you talk okay. to me yeah. on the phone because there's like a... Okay. I'm, I'm, I'll tell you, my phone is kind of messed up. I'm, and I'm talking to people. Speak to folks on uh, my uh, right hand mention here, but we call we're, we watch you from a funeral home here in Orange Beach, Florida, and I, we just get the biggest kick out of it. I love road trips, and I can't get out of here very often, so I road trip with you. Now I wonder, if, can you tell me what kind of oil you use in your truck? Mm, the shop puts it in. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> okay, um, so you don't you don't know. You know, if it's, it's uh, one of these new synthetics that does 20,000 miles or something like that? No, we it's just a standard uh, standard oil. I See, I go by the shop and they give it to you in a bucket, basically. Uh, so I hate to, say, hate to name a brand or whatever else, but yeah, they, they change the oil every 50,000 miles. And... Yes, and basically, basically, whenever I go to a terminal, I top it off with whatever it is that comes out of the bucket. And out of the bucket, okay, that's, that's a beautiful thing. And I, you probably been asked this a million times, but do you have to have a particular place where that's the prettiest place you drive? Do I, I know somebody asked about the place you might want to go back to? What's the prettiest place you drive? Oh man, there's so many, really are. Uh, I, I would say the northwest, uh, you know, because you have the volcanoes, you have the mountains, you have the Columbia River. Um, I would love to get on a paddle boat, steamboat, and run up and down the Columbia River. Uh, man, if I absolutely had to pick the one spot, I would probably say somewhere up in the northwest. But okay. There's All so right. much well, to do I, everywhere. I, agree. I like the best. Anywhere in Wyoming, Colorado, Montana, Washington, Oregon, all those places are gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, I, I love your channel. Uh, we watch you all the time, man. And uh, listen, it's, it's awesome that you're taking time to talk to people. We appreciate it. And we'll talk to you later. Hey, no problem. I appreciate it. You have a good day down there in Florida. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. Oh, get some coffee here. Do I ever travel to Hagerstown, Maryland? We've been through there. Um, I don't think we've actually had a delivery there. I know there's a pilot somewhere up in there. But, yeah, we've been out that way. By the way, if you go to the website, biggertravels.com, and click on... The more, the more dot dot dot, because I don't have all the room to put all the links, and go down to the visitor map. Ken Laws actually keeps track of all our counties visited, and he started keeping track in 2016, beginning of 2016, I believe he said, and we have actually visited or rolled through exactly half of the counties in America. 500 and, I don't know, 76, I think, 570-something. So, if you ever get in the chat room on the on YouTube Live or the blog or whatever, if there's any questions about statistics and how many times we've been on a certain road or how many times we visited a certain state or last time we've been to a city, he's a man to ask. He, he's... <laughs> He's got a notebook full of information from Big Red Travels. So he does a great job. I see Mystic Wolf popped in there. My hat does say Deadwood, South Dakota. Let me see if I can give you guys a close-up view of it. Can you see that? 
Maybe, I don't know. I like, I like Deadwood, South Dakota. Did that help you? Hey, tomato head. How are you, tomato head? If I had a tomato, I'd hold up a tomato. What's the number one thing that four-wheelers do that make me scream? Goober snort. Oh, the ones that don't know how to merge. They get on the highway and they sit right beside you. They don't speed up. They don't slow down. They basically just demand you move over, even though you got traffic on your left. Nothing happening at the fuel island out here. Got somebody calling in right now. Let's see what they've got to say. We're running at an hour and 31 minutes. We'll broadcast for another 29 minutes. <sighs> Tomato head! Tomato head. Where's the next trip? We'll tell you tonight. And it's going to be another short trip. Freight is slow. I don't know why, but freight is slow. Alright, let's talk to Mark. 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 There, how are you? You there, Mark? Hey, Steve. Hey, how are you? Oh. How are you? Doing good. I will talk to you about retirement. Okay. I want to ask you, am I crazy? I spent seven years on the road, retired, and now I sit here watching you drive. Am I crazy? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> You're... <coughs> You are no crazier than me showing everybody where I drive. I mean, you know, I'll be honest with you. A lot of times people ask me, do I watch other truck driver channels? And the answer is no, because when I drive 14 hours a day, 16 hours a day, the last thing I want to do is watch somebody else drive. But a lot of retired, I mean, a lot of retired truck drivers have sent me emails saying, I'm traveling on the same roads, stopped at the tr same truck stops, going through the same cities or the customers that they used to back in the 70s and 80s, you know, when, when they were doing the trucks. And for whatever reason, they retire, they can't drive anymore. But now they, they, they basically still can't. And so, no, that's not crazy. The trucking's in your blood. And you can't get out and do it yourself well I guess I'll do it for you yeah I started in 1960 wow retired 2007 at 70 years old so yes. I probably could have done a few more years but I kind of miss it but you fill the void well thanks for everything I really enjoy it not a problem sir I appreciate you where are you calling from anyways I'm from Florida Florida. Everybody ends up in Florida, you know that? Where does everybody go? <laughs> well, no, you watch all you want, because like I said, seriously, we have quite a few retired truck drivers. And I'm surprised. That's one group of people that I thought would never watch, is retired truck drivers, and find out that's, you know, quite a few. So... Yeah, well, you do, you do tend to miss it. Well, good deal. All right, sun's still shining right, there in uh, Florida. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting warm. It's getting ready for the heat. Well, it's go been hang out. weather for the last three months. Hang out at the beach while you still can. I don't go to the beach. I sit and watch you all day. My wife thinks I'm not. <laughs> hey, you're retired. You can sit wherever you want to sit. He <laughs> got that right. All right. I uh, appreciate, right, appreciate you. you. Bye. All right. Let's talk to... Let's talk to Gordon. How are you? 
Hey, Steve, this is great. Hey, I just had a quick question. When you deliver, how much do you have to pay to get your truck unloaded? I've been asking that myself. <laughs> first off, truck driver, what you just... first off, the company actually pays for that. Um, yeah, I figured that. So it doesn't come out of my pocket, but I don't know. You know, it's like if a customer, my personal opinion, if a customer orders product, don't they have people to unload it? You know, their own workers. You would think. And I don't know. Some places do actually work that way, and other places. Adjust this real quick, if I can. There we go. Other places, high, like, especially like grocery stores, they hire lumber companies, and there's a whole organization like Capstone Logistics and uh, Freight Handlers Incorporated, I guess, and, and all that stuff. And that's what they do, is they unload the truck, and the last delivery we had, not this last one, but two, two deliveries, I guess, $331 to unload. Yeah, wow. And that is just, I don't get it. If, if you ordered it, why wouldn't your own employees unload it? Why do, why is That's it my right. responsibility to deliver it to your, you know, docks or whatever, other than me backing up to the docks? I don't know. I've never understood that, and it can get quite expensive out in, now, I can't remember the name, but basically out by uh, Portland, there's a grocery store we delivered to that is six hundred dollars flat out to unload every time. Wow! And it's like really that's well, just that just, in, that, that just increased the, pro the product cost. Exactly, and I don't understand it. There are some companies that we roll into, and the employees themselves will do it. No lumber company. They will do it, and those are the people that we can get in and out in under an hour. But these people yeah. we're paying, you know, three, four, five hundred dollars to, those, ironically, are the ones who are dragging their feet and hold us for five, six, seven, eight hours. And, and I don't get that. So, yeah. don't have a better answer. I got, <laughs> I got another question. Like your GPS, does it say all the... Your GPS, does it tell you all your detours and everything? No. It uh, basically just tells me how to get from point A to point B. Uh, it's not yeah. a live GPS like what you would get on your phone. Um, yeah. You know. You can go on like 511 and find right. detours. Right. I just go, go by. Coming through Nebraska. Go ahead. Coming through Nebraska, they got a lot of roads out and bridges out because of the flood. So you got to watch yourself. Yeah, the GPS I have is, you know, updated once in a while. And it doesn't take into account construction or, you know, disasters, flooding or whatever. But that's where it's my responsibility to actually know what's going on. And what I do is I pull up Google Maps and I will look. And, of course, you pay attention to the news and find out where the flooding is. Yeah. And say, like, Interstate 29 in Iowa and Nebraska being closed and whatnot, yeah. all I have to do is just program yeah, okay. my GPS to go a different route. But, yeah, they leave it up to you to basically pay attention and know what you're doing. Yeah, I live in uh, Skyler, Nebraska. You call it Shula. Okay. And we got the road out south of town that uh, will probably be December till they get it fixed. So be careful. Oh, Always. Hey, you, uh, they're putting a love truck stop out here at Skyland, Nebraska, next to the Cargill plant. So hey, that'll be nice. Going to start building that. That'll gonna be really start nice. Start building that this month, I guess. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, okay, you be safe. All right, I appreciate it, sir. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. All right, let's talk to I don't know. We're gonna, we'll we'll take a chance on this. 
Howdy, how are you? Sammy from Honda, don't know I'm talking to him. Sammy from Honda, don't know I'm talking to him. Hello? Howdy. Hello? Howdy. Hi, Steve, how are you? Good. Make sure you talk on the phone. Um, don't, uh, don't wait for that delay. Okay, hold a second. Let me turn down this volume. Okay, you there? Yep. Yes, I've uh, come across your show a couple of days. It's amazing. Well, I appreciate that. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm not a trucker, but I worked with a trucking company for about 11 to 12 years in the port city of Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Okay, okay. Calling from across the yes. pond, eh? Yes. <laughs> That's right. And we work with uh, brands like Volvo and Mercedes-Benz and stuff like that. I don't know if you have them over there. Uh, very rare. Once in a long time we'll see one, but very rare. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, you you keep everybody together, you know, so you fulfill not only a, a touristic function, but you also, you know, like a social function to keep all the old truckers together. And it's, it's amazing what you do. I give you a lot of respect. Well, I appreciate that, sir, very, very much. Yes, yes. So keep on doing what you're doing. Uh, drive safe, and uh, we'll keep in touch. All right. Sounds good. I appreciate it. You uh, have okay, a good night in the, take care. in the Netherlands. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. We've got 16 minutes left. Phone's still open if anybody wants to call. Tomato head. You want to see the small picture again? There, that's just for Tomato Head. Orlando, Florida, how are you? Okay, anybody got a question on chat before we wrap this up? Roll down the window so I like <laughs> don't burn up. Wow, it's, it's hot when you roll the windows up. Jim Rocket, how are you? No questions on the phone and no questions in chat. Ecuador's checking in. How are you, Ecuador? All right, so the photo contest, if you heard that other caller, um, I still want to do the road crew photo contest. It's been delayed a little bit, having trouble finding a suitable program that doesn't risk the security of the website, allowing you guys to upload images. Um, so don't give up on it. But we are going to put it off for now until I can get that stuff straightened out. Uh, Lionel's asking, do I have all, or did I have all the equipment for the radio? Uh, half of it I already had, but the actual audio controls, the, the mixer and the thing that allows me to do the phone-in, call-in part, uh, that's all was bought. Yes. Have I ever considered, Walt is asking, have I ever considered doing flatbed or RGN? I don't know what RGN means. Flatbed, no, because <laughs> can you imagine a windy day, and I'm, I'm a little guy, 160 pounds or whatever. Can you imagine if I jumped up on that flatbed trying to fling tarp around? and a big gust of wind comes up, I'd get wrapped up in that, and you wouldn't find me for a week. 
That looks like too much work. <laughs> um, so no, I do I do like this ain't working. I do like the reefer better because that's all I do is drive and then sit there and play with the website or answer emails or whatever while I get unloaded. So removable gooseneck. No, I ain't done none of that. Yeah, tarps are heavy. Yeah, if you are one of the big guys, that would make sense. But for me, no. Then dry van. I I decided not to on dry van because a lot of the dry van drivers, they have to get back there and they have to unload everything themselves. From what I understand, I've never done a dry van but refrigerated I basically bump the dock and pay somebody else to unload us and I guess this isn't gonna work so we'll just check this off there how's that Is that better Are there any behind the scenes of being on the road? Ah, give me a better question. I don't know what you mean. Have I ever forgotten to fuel the reefer? No, 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 no. You cannot forget to fuel your reefer. Um, I've heard of lots of loads get ruined by people not doing the reefer fuel. But every time I leave the truck, you know, like, say, go get coffee, fuel the truck, whatever the case may be. Out of habit, I will eyeball the temperature and make sure the temperature is right and always check out the uh, refer fuel level. That's, that's one of those things that cannot happen is running out of fuel. You know, I mean, you, you do that to ice cream, think of the mess. You do that to a load of beef, think about the million or hundreds of thousands of dollars that would be. So, yeah, always got to remember to keep fuel in your reefer tank. Do I ever get offers to drive for other companies? I have, but I'm happy where I'm at. Uh, no complaints whatsoever. I get paid enough to keep me very happy. And I have never been one of these people that is going to uproot and change jobs just because somebody offers me a penny or more, a penny to mile more, if that came out right. A penny or two more per mile. There you go. I got it out. I, I, I believe in being loyal like that. You know, I've got my tenure as vacation and sick pay and and moved up the ranks and I'm not going to leave a company just to make a penny or more a mile. Now if somebody offered me a dollar more a mile maybe we'll talk about it. What do I do for cooling in the summer? Well there's fans and most of the time you crack your window open there's a good breeze running across. Um, when it's really, really hot, you no way around it. Idle the truck and keep the AC going. So, can I video the fueling process? I guess I could. Nobody's ever asked me to do that. <laughs> Is there some country I would want to visit? I would want to visit Tomato Head. No, I don't know. Alaska would be good, but that's our own country. But you got to go through Canada to get there. So, um, I don't know. I kind of like where I'm at. Have I made a video on a truck inspection? How long does it take? You know, no. I, I'm not going to do that. And the reason is because lots of other trucking shows... If you do a search for it, they can tell you 
or, or they show you that they've done inspections and whatnot um, on, on video I I don't think that's right for me because that information is already out there and I don't want to open myself up and you know there's people out there oh well you didn't check this first you forgot that you didn't look at that bolt you didn't do this in order you forgot a step and I just don't feel like opening up myself for that. <laughs> I'd be honest with you, you know, I mean, if that's something really, really important to you, there are other channels that would have that. I just might do cents worth. All right, so we got nine minutes. Does the boss run more trucks? Quite a few of them. Any incredible landscape that surprised me for the first time? Uh, I don't know, Columbia River. All, all the beautiful places. And nothing really sticks out. 253 people watching. That's not bad. I'm just rattle, rambling along. Okay, we're going to try to do road crew shows every two weeks, but obviously it all depends on timing and schedule, and a lot of times at the end of the night, the last thing I want to do is drag out all the audio equipment and whatnot, so we do what we can. Do I get enough exercise? I do, because actually... Um, you know, walking back and forth to get coffee 18 times a day, uh, sometimes I go hiking and whatever, I don't know. I get out, obviously I do enough, uh, that keeps me alright. Have I ever been in the Grand Canyon? I have many times, three, three times, four times. What's the most memorable day while traveling? Um, I don't know if it's a good memory or a bad memory, but the very, very first trip I ever did by myself, you know, after training and all that other stuff, I remember um, going down Interstate 10, and I kept thinking, I'm alone by myself driving this big truck going to a place that I've never been and I remember I'll be honest with you I remember being scared to death <laughs> I, I kept looking and thinking and double guessing myself am I on the right road am I gonna make a mistake what if I can't find a building and, and it, it feels weird to be running away in somebody else's vehicle <laughs> So, I don't know, I guess that would be one of the, one of the memories I have. There's so many of them. Do I have a manual or automatic? I have a automatic that I can flip-flop between manual or automatic or anywhere in between. All right, so we have six minutes. Phone line's still open for that long. Um... If you want, or not. Wally's lunch. Ran off to Burger King. That's not very good. How many years have I been truck driving? Jay Des stands asking. Since 2006. So, we've actually been driving a little bit longer, year and a half longer than we've been doing the website. So, Steve's story times. Well, we already gave you a story about the crybaby in Utah. <laughs> you know, that still gets me. Want to be a tough truck driver, but you can't, you can't handle somebody parking next to you. All right, five minutes. Come on, what else you want? 
We'll stretch this out if you want. DK, D, D, oh boy, D, T, U, K, how are you? Robert from Boisillon, Ohio will cook me a steak. We'll be there sometime. Can I talk about the weather? Uh, tornado. Kathy is asking about tornadoes, severe weather, and truck stops. I do not know of any truck stops that have shelters. I suppose you could run in there and hide the bathroom, but other than that, uh, I don't know. I guess just fasten your seatbelt and put on a heavy jacket and hope for the best. I know that some of the customers will have signs that tell you, you know, emergency storm shelters. But as far as the truck stop, I don't don't know they offer them. How many hours do of drive time do I have to do today? Well, a full slate because we haven't driven anywhere. All we're going to do is drive five miles up the street. So, Corey D, how are you? What brand tractor would I purchase? I would say a tractor like this. I like this very, very much. I would like one to be a little bit longer, though. You know, more, more room. All right, let's talk to uh, Linda, and uh, you'll be the last call. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Can you hear me? Yep, can you hear me? <laughs> well, sometimes we can, I mean, I can't hear very good, so I just thought I'd be the last caller and let you know that I really appreciate your channel. Well, I appreciate that. Glad you like it. I like that it's fresh and you have an amazing road crew that people just, talk nice and I think that in this day and age I think that that's really important I do too I do too I know that sometimes we get flack you know from from others for maintaining that you know family friendly kids safe but that's important there's enough garbage out there I don't want to be like that I want to be above and beyond that and it it's it makes me happy that I'm just trying to find my there we go. Um, it, I've been on a couple of other road chats, and, um, you know, I just keep coming back to you, and I'm going to stay with you. I just, um, you have just an amazing bunch of people that say I have dogs in the house real life. <laughs> they, they really um, are. They really are the best road crew ever. They really are, and I, the mods are amazing. Um, they do a really good job, and um, I'm in Minnesota, and I see your weather, and um, it's really, really nice out there, too. It is. <laughs> Sorry, the dogs decided to bark their heads off, and I'm going to go outside now. What, um, have you ever done, like, any kind of contest for people to do a ride-along with you? I haven't. I have not. I've had a couple other regular friends, non-website related, that went with me for, you know, two weeks or whatever. Uh, hadn't, hadn't really done anything with the website like that, though. Yeah. I didn't know if, you're, if it was, like, against company policy for you to have a rider with you. I could, but I, I don't know if I'd want to involve the website in that part of it, though. <laughs> and on a 10 hour drive you just don't know who you're going to end up with either I suppose well that and and you know I mean anything can happen somebody be filming me filming somebody else or who knows and it's like 
to me, honestly, that seems like it'd be a big legal liability. And I don't even want to go there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate your time and taking my call, and I wish you a wonderful day. And um, hello, road crew, Mud. Thank you for a great job, and thank you for welcoming um, welcoming me and helping me with a lot of things that I'm still learning on the um, the chat line. So they're really a great help for me. Hey, no, not a problem. You have yourself a good day. I believe you said Minnesota, correct? I did. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye, Steve. Bye. All right, so I guess we'll go go ahead and wrap this up. Very happy. Look, we didn't drop any frames. We didn't buffer at all, I don't believe. I, every time I looked, we got a green light. Uh, green light meaning no, uh, no buffers, no nothing like that. Phone, phone part is closed. And I don't know. What do you think about the uh, the call-in part? Get rid of that. I like it. I think it would be pretty cool uh, to have people call in and, and talk to me and whatnot. But, see, two... All right, it's almost 3 o'clock. Uh, I think I'm going to go find some grub to eat lunch. Uh... This restaurant here is pretty good, actually. Uh, got roast beef and cornbread and mashed potatoes and red potatoes and banana pudding and, and all that other good stuff. So, I appreciate you guys. Uh, hope you're happy with the second edition or second episode of the Big Group Travel Road Crew Radio. We'll get better. This is new to me, new to you, and we're just winging it. It seems to be my my deal is just to wing it. And gosh, dog, I just look at myself and need a shave. Uh, okay, well, anyways, I will talk to you guys. We won't broadcast today because we're only going up the street. No, no point in starting the camera for two minutes and turning it back off. So the next time I will see you guys would be tomorrow morning. And we do have our next trip. All right. You guys have a good night. Thanks for listening.